Hi everyone. Hi Laura. Um, I actually just wanted to say before when we were worshiping, I thought it was a really, really cool image which um, I haven't had images in ages, so when that kind of yeah. that message was just amazing. I got this image of like a waterfall, but instead of it being water it was milk. I was like, oh, okay, sweet as so what does that mean? But then um, I saw like this hand and God took me down to this bit where it was really, really calm. And on the rocks, there was honey. And then he's like, just come in the water with me. Well, wow. in the milk. So I did. And then he said, everything that I have for you is for good. And you'll always have good in me. So I just wanted people to hear that because it might speak to you. Um, yeah, so we had our book course last week. And it was really amazing. Um, we were watching to preach. And I was super nervous because like, oh, we're all going to have the same message. But we didn't. Um, every single person was different, and I'm pretty sure I got saved again. <laughs> so originally, at the start of the week, when I found out, I was like, oh, okay, I'll just do my message, in which I did in Christchurch. But then I got a text the other day saying that um, I should preach what is on my heart and not what is expected. So, this is something really hard for me to talk about because I've never said it before. That's my real testimony. It's all good, kiddo. Come on. I've been at the Catholic Christian Centre for 17 years. This is like a home for me. So for me to finally say my real testimony of my life, it's um Something that really freaks me out. I was driving in and I was shaking and I feel so vulnerable. I was like, I don't think I should do this. Maybe I, because I printed off my other message as well. I was like, maybe I should just bring that in. But I decided that it's about time. And I asked my parents' permission if I could, well, not have dirty little secrets, but <laughs> just finally get it off my chest because I think I need this as well. Um... And I know that some people, their testimony is really like out there and crazy. But for me, it's never been like that. It's just like I grew up in church. It's nothing extreme has ever really happened to me in my eye view. But to me, it's a journey. Um, and it's my journey. And it's my turn to share. So I'm going to. Um, so as I said, I grew up in a Christian family. We were super close and always had fun. My sister's my best friend and I love my brother like nothing else. We're so, so tight-knit. Um, and I love that. And I love that we always were encouraged to have dreams, encouraged to have hopes and ambitions and opportunities, and we always had constant support. And I love my family. And even though we're all individuals and so strong in who we are, together we're a family. I was 13 years old. And I remember this day so clearly. We lived in Winton. Oh, no. Just kidding. We lived in Wallace Town in Linda Parcher's old house. Woohoo! <laughs> I remember it so clearly because I was meant to be working on the farm that day, that afternoon. And it was just after lunch and my brother, he's quite into um, fashion and hairstyling and stuff like that. And he was really bored. So he was like, Laura, will you be my model? And Jim, can I do it here? And I was like... Fine, but I'm going on the farm soon. So I had this really amazing hair from on the farm. So I'm quite classy, really. But they <laughs> call the cows. Um, but they set me down, and my brother and sister, and I remember my mum was sitting in the chair by the office, and then right beside it was the dining room table, and Dad was sitting there. So they brought us into the room, and they sat us down, and I was like, oh, well, what's up with this, because I've got to go in like half an hour. And they told us that they were going to split. Um, Mum and Dad, I asked them if they were getting a divorce. And... There's one thing that stuck with me so clearly, which Mum said. And she said, when they got married, they said they want to.
and I see that they meant that. And that they, all they needed to do was take a break, to fall in love again and work on what they needed to do. Because they didn't believe in divorce. I was 13, so obviously at that stage, everything in my life is changing. All my friends, are, they're getting to that point where they're trying to find out who they are. And it's really, really a vulnerable age. But I don't think, like, I'd ever realised that until now, that I was really, really scared. Um, I didn't really know what to do. I was so, I just was speechless. And I remember Dad asking if I wanted, if he wanted to work on the farm for me. And I said no, because I just needed to get out of the house. It was just too much, because in my view, everything was perfect. We were a big, happy family. I just, I didn't understand. Um, so it was really hard because it's not what I knew. <coughs> and I remember this one night, so clearly, I was, me and my brother used to share a room, and my sister, because she was older, had her own room, and I thought that was so unfair, but that's okay. <laughs> um, so me and my brother were in that room, and it was night time, and we were sleeping, and he's, oh my gosh, he's the worst person to share a room with. <laughs> I love you, Sam. Um, but he snores and he scratches and he makes weird noises. And I'm like the lightest sleeper in the world, so I would be waking up constantly. And I remember one time throw a pillow at him and he didn't wake up. What the heck, man? So I just don't know how he broke up in this, but I remember one night and I heard um, lots of yelling and like slamming of doors and banging of pots and stuff and it was like we'd gotten sort of used to the fact that there was always arguments but this was different and I remember waking up and I tried to wake Sam up and he was out to it like a brick, of course. So I went through to my sister's room and she was awake so she let me into her bed and I was beside her and it was getting louder and louder and then Half an hour later or so, Sam came up, uh, he woke up and he came into our room and he made sure we were okay. And then he went back to bed and then um, it was getting louder and then it just stopped. It was just silent. And we were really unsure what it was and then we just heard the car leave. And mum had left because she just couldn't take it. So I laid there. I felt like she left us. But she didn't leave it like that. She just needed to get away and go to friends who could comfort her and look after her. And I remember being beside my sister and she protected me. Um, so it was really good to have someone like that, but then my sister had a really good friend. She was really close with her and somehow without us even realising, we were close with her as well, but she managed to manipulate my sister. She stole her away from me and away from my family. My sister thought for a while that she was a lesbian. She. Um, ended up moving to Dunedin and we lost all contact with her. We didn't know where she lived, we couldn't even text her, we didn't know anything. Um, I lost my best friend. That was really hard for me because I was still really young, I was probably about 14 at that stage, and I felt that I was in the way. Because mum and dad had their problems, my sister had hers, I felt that if I had any of my problems brought up, that. It just wasn't good enough. Like, I just couldn't make any more drama for my family, and I tried so hard not to. So I just decided I would suffer silently. It was just the best option I felt for everyone. Um, I was really scared to make mistakes, because the new mum and dad were so hurt, and they were angry, because they didn't want to go through this as much as we did. And I was scared if I'd make mistakes, that I'd make it worse for them. It was just seemed like it was just a big series of unfortunate events. Like, and I couldn't stop it, and I couldn't get off the wheel. I just didn't understand.
see why this was happening, and I was really scared. But um, by the power of like God and just by love, my parents completely changed everything. They learned how to deal with each other's problems and everything like that, and I'm madly in love. And I'm so, so happy to say that they're still together. Um, my parents, to this day, are crazily in love. My, we had my sister's wedding, I think it was, I don't know when it was. I should really know. But yeah, I think two years. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't that. <laughs> um, two years ago, thanks, Dale. And a lot of people commented on how close our family was and how they were like, oh, you've got such an amazing family. And I really believed them. But before that, I felt like I lost another part of my family, my brother. My sister realised that she wasn't a lesbian and she got out of that relationship and she's now happily married. But for my brother, it was a lot harder. So my whole high school life, I've always been asked, oh, is your brother gay? And these are my people who I don't know. These are people who think that they know my family and they've been asking me. And I was like third form or even younger sometimes and I felt like, what do you mean to say? You know, so of course I had my brother's back and I always denied it. But one night I was coming home from production practice and I asked him and he said yes, that he is. And he made me promise something that I knew I couldn't keep. And he said, don't tell mum and dad. That was really hard for me because when someone trusts me with something, I will try my hardest to keep it. But this was too much, like it was eating me apart. And I think mum and dad finally realised that. Um, they sat me down one night and they said, what's, like, what is the, what's wrong, what's on your mind? And I just, I tried to do, like, completely push them the other way, make them think of something else, try to tell them sweet jokes because I think I'm quite funny. <laughs> but it didn't seem to work. They just, they really persisted on me. And I didn't want to say because... If I told them, I knew that the person that was involved would hate me. And I didn't want my brother to hate me. Um, so, pretty much by the end of the night, my brother was pulled out of bed and was asked if he was gay. And he said yes. And I felt like I lost a lot of him. I lost his trust. I don't know if I'll ever get that back to this day. And that really sucks. But I know that the thing is, which is good now, is he's so happy because there's nothing holding him back and he's so free and I'm so proud of who he is. I wouldn't change him for anything. I'm so crazy about him. He's an amazing man. But I did always feel like I was a problem. I felt like I was a problem in mum and dad's relationship and my sister and my brother. And the crazy thing is, is when you believe that you're the problem for so long, you begin to act like you are. I know I should have run to God because I've always been a Christian, but I just thought it would be easy if I didn't. That my problems weren't good enough or big enough or anything like that, that God has got better things to deal with. And I know that was so naive. I really felt like the enemy blocked, blocked, sorry, boxed me up and loved putting his coat of discouragement on me. And he did it all the time and I wore it with pride, without even realising. And I always felt belittled, always felt not good enough. But the crazy thing is I just wouldn't let go. And I just didn't realise that I couldn't let go of that. And I believed what the devil was saying to me. Just like Tony told us with um, Exodus about how Moses, he thought he was a problem, that's why he fled. He was so scared of who he was and what he had done that he thought he was a problem. He thought that he was unforgivable, unusable, and just an object. That nothing he could do could make it better. And that's exactly how I felt. In my mind, I was a problem. It'd just be easier if I wasn't around for everyone. I never ever thought of anything crazy like that. But just to not share my problems was an easy way out. But the thing is, is 
is that you and I are not the problem. We're actually the answer. That's right. And I was completely shocked when God broke through my darkness. I didn't realise it was that dark. <coughs> because it becomes such a reality to you that you don't actually realise. <laughs> and that was really crazy. And I know everyone knows this passage. Psalms 139 verse 7. Where can I flee from your presence? It's nowhere. Moses tried to flee for 40 years in the desert. Didn't really work at all. Um, for, honestly, through the grace of God and being so faithful and coming to church all the time, I realised what God was actually calling me to. And before when I was um, sitting in the worship and saw that image, I closed my eyes again when Ian was talking. Sorry, Ian, I wasn't really listening. <laughs> but <laughs> God just really showed me, um, like we were lying down in the water, in the milk, sorry, and it was sort of like a film screen going back and forth and he was showing me that he had angels and him all around me in every single part of my life. Oh, and it was cool. Yeah. Because it really made me realise what God has for me. And that he never left me. Even when I felt like I was so completely alone, I wasn't. I realised my calling in my life and... I believe it's to preach. I've had several words over my lifetime and recently this year saying that I'm going to preach. Yeah. And for me that's really cool because there's so much power in your words. Yeah. And God's words in our mouth is as powerful as they are in His. Yeah. So for me I'm really excited. I know that this isn't what I would usually talk about but I just felt that I needed to speak from my heart. So. That's what I really wanted to say.